Death on a cross, wounded for sin, lay down your life as an offering. Glory to Jesus, our Savior and King. And together we say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And why is he standing? Please open with me to First Samuel chapter 17. And together we read verse 48. First Samuel chapter 17. Together we read verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. That passage said the enemy ran towards David. And David ran towards the enemy. David chose to confront his Goliath. Today's sermon is part three of Break Up Your Fallow Ground. And the subtopic is Confront Your Goliath. That thing that is threatening your destiny. Today, the Almighty God will give you the power to confront it, to subdue it, and to permanently prevail in Jesus' name. Let's take this song that is going to the world. You are the Lord, that is your name. You, you will never share your glory Lord. with any man. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the speak expressly, O oh God. The word that we need, every one of us, the word that we need to fulfill destiny, release upon us this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please take your seat. Good morning. I welcome you into the presence of the Lord. And those that are joining us all over the world, wherever you may be, I welcome you as well. And I'm believing God 
that there will be a turnaround in your life in Jesus' name. Please avoid any distractions and listen for your own word. Listen for your own word. When you hear your word, you say it loud. Because the word that you need is not necessarily the word that your neighbor needs. I say this every Sunday, and I mean it. There's a word that God has prepared for you as a person today. Listen for that word. The moment you hear it, write it down, turn it into prayers. And I'm joining my faith with yours. A new thing will begin in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, once again, I ask that you put your word in my mouth. You bless your people and you glorify thy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Break up your fallow ground. Fallow ground represents a ground that cannot reach its destiny, cannot fulfill its purpose because that ground has not been prepared. Fallow ground represents something that God has a plan for, but that thing cannot reach the purpose of God because it has not done its own part. There is something you need to do for the purpose of God to be fulfilled in your life. What is that thing that God wants you to begin to do starting from today? Last Sunday, the subtitle was Fear No, Fear No More. How many of you remember the sermon for last Sunday? Let me see the hand up if you remember. Fear no, fear no more. And you remember it begins by saying fear is a satanic stronghold. It went on to say fear is not from God. Faith and power are from the Lord. And that fear has torment. We're building on that today into this part three. And today is really going to be transformational, I believe. Confront your Goliath. Today is the Goliath of fear that we are continuing in. And the first point is that the plan of God concerning you shall stand. I say it one more time. The plan of God concerning you shall stand. You might be at a place in your life where you are wondering whether things will still happen the way you desire it. You are worried about your future because some things that are going on make you to wonder. But the word of God for you is that his plan for you will surely come to pass. In Psalm 33, verse 8 and 9, when we open to that passage. Psalm 33, verse 8 to 9. It says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Verse 9, the reason for that. Say, so he spoke and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. It doesn't matter what others may be planning concerning you. What God has said, that thing will surely come to pass. I join my faith with yours once again and I decree over your life. The words of God concerning you shall surely come to pass. Every word that has been released upon you that is contrary to your destiny. I reverse in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 10 of this same 33. Verse 10. Say, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the Eden to north. What does that mean? Say, there are people that will gather together and they will form an opinion. They will seek counsel together. 
But the counsel that is not in, in line with the purpose of God for your life. God will allow them to do their meeting. We allow them to do all the plan. At the end, it will make you to come to nothing. I prophesy for you. Upon your life, all those who are meeting and they are reaching a decision that is contrary to your joy, that decision shall come to nothing in Jesus' name. You know, something happened in the last two days in Nigeria. I will not mention it, but you will know if you have been following events in this country. I don't spend my time too much worrying about politics. But in politics, sometimes God speaks. And it's not, not one, one of the parties better than the other, just so you know. And no politician is better than the other politician. They are all, they are all the same. But even though they are all the same, God sometimes does his own wonders in spite of who they are. In the last two days, you saw somebody rehearsing how to be king. The Bible said they were already doing rehearsal. The stage was already built. They've already awarded all the contracts. Those who are going to be appointed commissioners are already giving testimony. A few hours before it came to pass, God overturned it. I pray for you. All those who are rehearsing to take the blessing that belongs unto you, they will be disappointed in Jesus' name. You know what God was saying concerning that particular event? Is that it's never too late. It's never too late. Just as he said here, he said they will, they will plan, they will plan, they will plan. At the end, it will make the plan to come to. If anybody had told the other man that it's still possible you will be governor, he will say, how can? The, uh, the inauguration is tomorrow. But I pray for you that your own will never be too late in Jesus' name. Why don't you arise and pray for yourself? Father, arise for me. Arise for me. Don't let my own be too late. Go ahead and cry to God. That is what Psalm 33 verse 10 is saying. It brings the counsel of the Eden to nothing. He maketh the devices of the people of no effect. My own will not be too late. My own will not be too late. It will not be too late. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Pray that prayer in a more affirmative way. It is not too late for me to be blessed. Go ahead and pray. It is not too late. It is not too late for me to be blessed. It is not too late for God to make a way for me. It is not too late for you to marry. It's not too late for you to have a child. It's not too late for you to be promoted. It is not too late. It is not too late. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I pray for you one more time. Even when people think it is too late, your God will arise for you in Jesus' name. Point number two. God has you covered. You may not know it, you may not feel it. 
But if you are in Christ Jesus, he has you covered. People can do what they want, but God has you covered. That is why you must confront your Goliath. Whatever it is that is working against you, confront it in the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans 8, verse 31. It says, if God be for us, who can be? Is anybody here who God is for? You believe that God is for you. So the question is, if you believe that God is for you, can anybody succeed against you? The answer is no. It doesn't matter how you may feel today. Oh, things are bad. Things are not looking good. Don't worry. God has you. God has you covered. That is the purpose of that passage. If God be for us, who can be against us? I don't know what it is that you are going through. But the almighty God is just laying in my heart. I don't know what it is you are going through. But you will prevail in Jesus' name. They may have said, oh, no, it cannot be done. It's, I say it will be done in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. Galatians 6, verse 17. Say, so let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. It doesn't mean that they won't try. It just means that they cannot succeed. Because the mark of God, of Jesus, is upon you. I pray for you one more time. That mark will speak for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And any mark that they have put upon you, I uproot in the mighty name of Jesus. I told you a story many years ago. I don't remember how, when was the last time I told you, but it's a real life story. It happened in Dallas, I think around 2000, yeah, 2000 or 2001. I was in a prayer department. And we just felt led to go and pray for this lady. The lady was advanced in age. I'm sure close to 40. Beautiful lady. Always in church, loves God, but no husband. As we were praying for her, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a mark on her. It's not a mark you can see with the ordinary eyes. But I saw the mark and God led us to pray. I pray for somebody here. Whatever mark the enemy has placed on you that's not allowing you to meet with favor, may that mark be replaced with the mark of Jesus in Jesus' name. In the second service, we will go a little bit deeper. But let me mention a few things. You see, when you bear in your body the mark of Jesus, nobody can stop you. But I want to use a particular story to show you what you must do. Exodus chapter 17 verse 11 to 12. Let's put it on the screen. That is the heart of today's message. Exodus 17, verse 11 to 12. said, it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalekites prevailed. The Amalekites are the enemies of Israel. Whenever Moses lifted up his hands, saying, Lord, we can, Israel won. Whenever Moses brought down his hands, Israel lost. Verse 12 explained what was going on. Said so Moses' hands were heavy. The man was tired. The man was very tired. So, take up his hand 
a little while will bring it down. And the moment he brings it down, the enemy starts to prevail. There is someone here. You feel tired. You have tried everything you know how to. And it appears things are not working. God is telling you, even though you are tired, don't lose faith. I said one more time, even though you are tired, you don't feel like continuing, you are not even motivated anymore, don't surrender. All eyes closed. You are that person. I don't know what is happening in your life, but you are, you are discouraged. You don't even feel like praying anymore. You, you have lost hope. Well, let's just wave that hand wherever you are. God, just, God bless you. Just wave it. Just wave that hand wherever you are. Just wave it. Just wave it. Wave it. Just wave it. Please stand. All eyes closed. Just stand wherever you are. God bless you, my brothers. God bless you, my sisters. God bless you. Stand wherever you are. Just stand. God bless you. God bless you. Lift those hands up. Just lift those hands up. Lord, I pray for your sons and your daughters. The grace not to surrender. The grace not to give up. Release unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. The power to hold on to the very end. May God give unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And as those hands continue to be lifted up in prayers, every Amalekite in your life shall be subdued in Jesus' name. God bless you, you can sit down. So when Moses couldn't carry on, the people around him realized, if we allow this man to put his hand down, we are all going to lose. They decided to hang his hand. The Bible said one person carried one hand, the other person carried the other hand. I pray for somebody here. God will send people that will lift up your hands in Jesus' name. Even when you don't feel like continuing anymore, God will send a helper to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to rise on your feet and pray a simple prayer. Say, Lord, I refuse to fear. Your plan concerning me shall surely come to pass. Go ahead and begin to pray to God. I refuse to fear. I refuse to surrender. I refuse to give up. Your plan concerning me will surely come to pass. Talk to God in faith. I refuse to fear. I am encouraged again to pursue my destiny. Your plan concerning me will surely, surely come to pass. Your plan concerning me will surely come to pass. I refuse to give up. I confront my Goliath. I refuse to be tired. I refuse to be tired. I know it will be well with me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You can take your seat. You are here this morning. You know this message is for you. But for you to be able to tap into that grace to wait to the very end, you must trust in the power of the Lord. You must surrender yourself to the person that will give you the strength to carry on. The choir will take the song, trust and obey, for there is no other way. You are here, you are saying, Pastor, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to put my hope in the Lord because I know with him all will be well with me. As they take that song, please come, I want to pray for you. Say, Pastor, pray with me, pray for me. I want to surrender my life to this God. The God that can arise for me at the 11th minute, 
eleventh hour. Just come. I want to pray with you. Come. When we walk with the Lord, come, come. In the light God bless you. Let's clap for them as they come. When you put your trust in the Lord, He will help you. Help you. You are watching us online. Send us your name and your telephone number. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You want to surrender your life. after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Save me. Help me. Be the Lord over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please go with my sisters. God bless you. Those waving to you. Let's clap for her. The rest of you, let's rise on our feet. Let's rise on our feet. I want to pray with another set of people. You believe that God is speaking to you as a person this morning to rededicate your life to God. I don't know how what has happened up to now, but you need to rededicate yourself to God. When that hand was coming down, God was saying to Moses, no, keep it up. You are the one God is talking to this morning. The choir will take another song. That song says, Conquerors and overcomers, now are we. You are a conqueror, you are an overcomer. But you need to rededicate yourself. You need to do more with God than you are doing today. Please come as a take that song. God bless you. You are an overcomer. Don't be tired. Come. Conquerors and overcomers, now are we. Come. You are an overcomer. God bless you. Just come. Say, Lord, I have come to dedicate my life to you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. I have come to dedicate my life to you. with all of us. But for those that God is talking to, you know you are, the, you are one of them. Please come. I want to pray for you specially that God will renew your strength even as you rededicate your life. You rededicate yourself to God. God bless you. Just come as they take that song one more time. Come forward. 
Lord bless you. commit your daughters and your son into your hands. They have come to rededicate themselves unto you. Lord, please renew them in the mighty name of Jesus. In any aspect of their lives that they may have gone cold, Lord, today, refire them in the mighty name of Jesus. And as they recommit themselves unto you, and as they re-energize themselves in you, Lord, make them overcome us in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. We can return more than conquerors, are we?